This uh, video is about the human impacts on the environment, and this is related to the ecology unit. So let's do a quick spec check. So we're going to do quite a lot of different things today. We're going to be looking at waste management, land use, deforestation, and global warming. So there's quite a lot of content here, uh, but uh, it, it's quite self-explanatory. So the first thing to say is that uh, obviously with more humans on the planet, so if we look at a graph of the population of the Earth, you can see that populations have increased quite dramatically over the last 100 to 200 years, and they're continuing to increase. So therefore, it's having a, an effect on the environment um, because more resources are required and therefore, um, obviously, the Earth's resources are going to be used and pollution is going to result. Um, and there are a few issues related to production of waste, deforestation, so that's removal of trees, and global warming. So let's just talk about waste. So as human populations increase, we make more things uh, and use resources. This produces waste affecting land, air and water. So for example, water pollution is basically polluted by fertilizers coming off uh, farmers' fields, pesticides and toxic chemicals from manufacturing processes. In terms of air pollution, air may be polluted by the burning of fossil fuels uh, and it produces sulfur dioxide, which is the main gas causing acid rain, and carbon dioxide, which is the main gas causing global warming. Then land use. So land is going to be used in different ways. So first of all, for building houses, for factories, building roads, concrete roads, and obviously you're destroying habitats when you build those, those cities and towns. Um, then land used for farming to produce food for a growing population. So this will destroy natural animal and plant populations. And then obviously we need mineral resources. So we need rocks. We need different types of minerals and um, resources from the land. So therefore you, you, you're digging it up in using uh, quarries. So now I'm going to talk about land use, and in particular, in the spec, it mentions uh, peat bogs. Now, peat bogs are not very well understood. Uh, you probably might not know what a peat bog is, but that's the first thing I'm going to talk about. So peat bogs or bogs are very wet areas of land without trees. Um, and they're very acidic and they often have very low levels of nutrients. Um, in them, though, there's uh, the the carbon and the dead um, plants have not decomposed very quickly and so over many thousands of years they they form peat uh, which is partially decayed plants now peat is a really good was a really good re resource in the past uh, in terms of burning it for a fuel um, now also it was used uh, by gardeners for garden compost peat-based composts for many years, but this dramatically reduces biodiversity. Um, the reason being is that peat takes many thousands, if not tens of thousands of years to form. Therefore, in uh, terms of human terms, it's a non-renewable non energy resource like fossil fuels. Um, and also peat bogs are extremely important because they, star, st they store large quantities of carbon and that's why we call them carbon sinks so if all the peat was removed and burned then this would quick, quickly release a huge volume of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and contribute to the greenhouse effect i'll be talking about the greenhouse effect and global warming in a minute another human impact is deforestation now, deforestation hasn't just occurred in places like tropical rainforests. You have to look back in uh, northern Europe, where we live in, in the UK, uh, and there was great forests and woodlands in those areas. And uh, 500 to 1,000 years ago, um, human, as human populations grew, those were cut down. Not everywhere, but they'd be cut down. And it's the same kind of thing that's happening in tropical rainforests. So here's a diagram of the deforestation in Borneo. 
uh, Borneo is an island, and you can see how the green areas of forest have been reduced quite dramatically in 50 years, in over 50 years, sorry. Um, and the reason is deforest, and the, re the problem with it is that it destroys the habitats of the organisms that live there, and through this kills individuals of many species. Now, there is a reason why the deforestation is going on, um, and that's to grow food, such as uh, uh, staple uh, diets such as rice. Rice is one of the most important staple diets in the whole of the world, or it's made for ingredients that make cheap food. So for example, um, palm oil is used in many um, processed foods. Also to grow more cattle for beef production. So livestock uh, now are in the deforested, deforested areas and also to grow crops that can be made into biofuel. So for example, sugarcane and maize can be used and fermented to produce ethanol. So why is deforestation such a problem? Well, there are, there are many issues, but these are the three main issues. And the first thing is, is that it increases the amount of carbon dioxide released when you burn the trees. So most of the trees, some of the trees are gonna be used for logging, um, but most of the trees are burned and therefore um, they will release the stored carbon dioxide or the stored carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. Also microorganisms will decay the dead wood and the micro microbes will be respiring. It, um, it also um, is important to state that trees are a carbon sink. They can reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the air during and basically because during photosynthesis they convert it into carbon and into biomass. So when we destroy those trees, we are losing a vital carbon sink. Tropical forest, rainforests also contain a huge number of different species. So if they're destroyed, there is a danger that many species become extinct, reducing biodiversity. Here's a fact for you that most medical pharmaceutical drugs come from plants. So if we destroy the diversity of plants on, on earth, then we're reducing the number of medicines that we could use in the future. Now I've mentioned a lot about the release of carbon dioxide. So we need to talk about, first of all, a natural process called the greenhouse effect, and then talk about the effects of global warming on the environment. So before I start, I know this is Dr. Biology and I know this is a biology video, uh, just to remind you that you will cover this in your GCSE chemistry as well. So you talk about the greenhouse effect in quite a bit of detail. For biology, you don't necessarily need to know this detail, but I think it's important you know what it is. And so therefore you understand what global warming is. The first thing to say is the greenhouse effect is a natural process. Since the earth had an atmosphere, it, it basically the greenhouse effect has occurred and it's basically very, very important that this occurs to ensure that temperature, it remains stable or within limits to it that allows life. Now, um, the human enhanced greenhouse effect is when we have um, produced more carbon dioxide than is being used. So for example, the burning or combustion of fossil fuels, um, also from cars, and from the internal combustion engine, um, and also deforestation, so burning of trees, burning of vegetation, and that increases CO2 in the atmosphere. It also increases methane. So for example, in rice paddy fields, there are many um, microbes that are respiring and they're producing a lot of carbon dioxide and methane. And obviously livestock produce a lot of methane too. So as I just said, greenhouse effect is very important to maintain the temperature at a suitable uh, temperature for life. Um, and as I said, carbon dioxide and methane are the two main greenhouse gases. Now, obviously, human effects have increased the amount of greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. Now, this is um, that you can see in this graph, the global mean surface temperature has also increased. increased. Now, this is a correlation between the uh, emitting of greenhouse gases and temperature. And it's pretty unrefutable now in terms of the amount of scientific study. 
Um, and it's been proven by many scientific studies that humans are enhancing this greenhouse effect and you're getting a rapid warming of global surface temperatures of Earth. So the thing is, you will probably want to know, well, why is that a problem? What, what are the consequences to um, humans and other species on planet Earth? So there are many consequences, and these consequences can have uh, severe effects on biodiversity. So I'm going to give you four main effects that are mentioned in the spec. The first one is loss of habitat. So if sea levels rise, then it causes more flooding and therefore reduces biodiversity. Um, it also reduces habit, it, it increases um, the fact that certain animals, here you've got a polar bear, for example, polar bears can swim really well, but they need to get between icebergs and ice flows. If those ice flows are no longer there, then uh, they can't swim forever. Um, secondly, changes in distribution of organisms. So that's basically where you find different species. So it, for some species, it might be very good in a particular area in terms of climate change, maybe warmer temperatures, or maybe it's wetter or drier. Um, but a large number of species won't be able to extend the range through which they live and therefore they will shrink in numbers. And if they shrink in numbers, they could potentially become extinct and affect food chains and food webs. Thirdly, changes in migration patterns. So many species uh, will move to different areas. For example, birds, if you think of swallows, for example, and they might spend winter in warmer climes or climates. So these may change and some may have to travel further, which may increase the death rate of a particular species, or some of them may not migrate at all, therefore affecting indigenous species that live, already live in a particular area. And the fourth, and this is probably the biggest issue, is less biodiversity. Species, many species take many thousands of years to adapt to a new environment. And what we're talking about is rapid climate change, so rapid increase in mean temperatures in a short space of time. So therefore, there are new conditions. And if they can't adapt to those new conditions, and they can't move to a fa more favorable area for them, then they will not survive and therefore become extinct. And therefore, you would get less biodiversity. OK, so here's some recap questions. So if you're watching on YouTube, I'd like you to pause at this moment and I'd like you to get a piece of paper and a pen and I'd like you uh, to try and answer the questions. So I'll give you a moment to pause. So pause now. And here are the answers. Again, please pause and maybe improve your work. If you're, if you're from my school, you can use a green pen to show improvement. And the final slide is just the questions and the answers. So I'll just give you a moment to have a look at that. And again, you can pause if you need to. I hope you found that uh, video useful. Please do subscribe if you haven't already to uh, Dr. Biology and there'll be more videos coming soon.